I'm getting a pretty late start to my day, but we're gonna head down south here a few miles and take a look at a big tiling project that we've got going on. I'll show you guys what's happening down there and why we're doing what we're doing. <laughs> You can see the boys working down here. We're actually running a large tile project here through four different parcels of property. The one I'm sitting on right now, uh, Dad owns. This is his field. This is kind of the top of where everything starts right down here through this ditch and it flows that way to the south. It's going to go through another piece of property right next to here that we actually rent and then it goes through the neighbor's property where he farms. We're working with him to kind of cut across the corner and, and help him out as well on his field and then it's going to go back down into another piece of property that we rent from a different landlord. So it's a good sized project. But what goes on here is there are dollars set aside, federal dollars uh, with the government through uh, NRCS, the, the Natural Resource Conservation Service and uh, Soil and Water Conservation District. There are, there's money set aside in a program that basically gets allocated and, and throws funds at making sure that um, we're doing the right thing for for conservation and in this case specifically for erosion so we're going to be building four basins here by the way we're also paying a good share of this the government is just kicking in and helping us with this so this is not a straight you know the, the government says here here's what you got to do and we're willing to help out if you do it right they step in they actually design the project and the plan and make sure that it's all being done correctly and then we kick in the rest of the dollars so that's how it works here but we've got four different basins going in it's a little difficult to see here but this is basically essentially the map so we're sitting right now right up in here at the top of the hill it's going to cut through this other piece of property there's going to be a basin here there's two of them up here in front where they're working now and another one right here all the way down to this state highway the whole idea really of this project is to prevent soil from washing down the hills when we get large rains so we're going to put up these basins or control structures that will time the water as it rains they'll allow a certain amount of water to leave that area at a certain speed rather than washing over the top of the soil it'll take it into a pipe and flow it underneath the ground and no this is not randy the master pipe layer and his crew doing the job here they work about an hour west of us and they're so busy with jobs around home that uh we kind of got our own crew that helps us out when we do stuff like this not our own crew, but we have a, a different crew. Erickson Excavating. There's your plug. So they've got the dozer hooked up right now. They're helping to pull with that just because it is a little bit greasy out here. And they're struggling a little bit with traction. So the dozers just kind of help to pull the plow through and make sure he's not spinning as much. Right now they're plowing in a 12-inch dual wall perforated pipe, which means there are really small slits actually cut right into that pipe. If you look closely as it goes through there, you can see those slits. That's where the water is actually going to soak into that pipe when it leaves the ground. I think it was about 150 degrees warmer inside the Ranger. I'm going to go back to there. Whew. Gosh, you know, if it wasn't for that wind. So here's a property line right here. Uh, that one across the way is the field that dad owns. This is one of the rented pieces here. As you can see the low area here, the way the water, you know, you can tell why it would flow down into this area and right through the bottom here and wash, because there's a lot of acres worth of hills here and the water all comes towards this direction. So they're just gonna capture it and control it to keep this soil where we want it. He's got a little bit of frost to dig through there and then he gets down to uh, some wet soils, so. Looks like he's running the winch now, pulling him instead of driving the actual dozer. I crossed over in front of him. I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom of this, the bottom of this project and see where they're at with things down there. I'm not down to the bottom yet, but I did wanna run over and check out this T and explain this. So here you can see the pipe down here. Wow, it's actually pretty crazily dry down at the bottom of that but this is going to tee off this is the pipe they're running right now and it's going to tee off and actually head that direction up this draw as well so at the top of this project here this thing is going to y off and take care of two different draws this is the point where two smaller watersheds 
come into one and then from here it continues south for quite a ways. This is the point here where the project crosses into the neighbor's piece for uh, a few hundred feet. I don't remember exactly what the plan said for a distance here. But you have to follow the contour of the ground and the natural flow of the water. So it's not it's not possible to dig through the hills and you know stay on just the, the, the pieces of property that we run. On top of that, uh, the neighbor has no issues with it because it's gonna clean this corner up for him and, and take some water you know, off the top of his soil as well. So it's in his best interest also. And this is down towards the bottom of the project now where we are on some pasture land that we actually, we did farm it for several years. The landlord saw it as more beneficial to put it into pasture land, which we had no problems with because of the soil type and everything over here. It's just a better fit for, for grassland. I just can't believe they found some rocks back here. Well, there's nothing going on back here. It looks like they're pretty well finished up pulling pipe through all this. Now they're gonna finish pulling pipe towards the top of the job, which is, gosh, it must be a mile up that way where they're at. Um, finish pulling pipe up through there, and uh, then tomorrow it sounds like they'll start on the basins. This spot right here is going to be the lowest basin. Meaning all the water that comes from three quarters of a mile north of here in both those watersheds is gonna come down through the pipe here. This is a 15 inch pipe. There's gonna be an intake right here and a big basin to stop any of the water that made it over the top. And it's gonna flow it into that intake at a slower speed to control it and take it in underneath the underground pipe or into the underground pipe. The old method is right here. You just pile the big rocks on the fence line at the low point and it hopefully slows the water down on the property lines there kind of works the same a little bit of the same way but you know not quite as not the same way might have gotten back here just in time I hope they're gonna hook up to that T I'll bet they're gonna do that before they finish that run because that run wants them to go to a smaller pipe size at the top and they've got the same boot down here which is a larger pipe size so I'll bet they're gonna pull this bigger pipe up through using the same boot on the plow It's pretty heavy and unflexible to work with by hand, so it's gonna help get it lifted up in there into the boot. Does that get cold immediately? Luckily, the old Polaris Ranger here has some solid heat. All these guys, all these operations, they're just well-oiled machines. There's too much equipment, too many guys to sit around and, and not be moving. So the second something starts moving, it's like the, the next guy knows exactly what he's supposed to be doing. It's, it's the same way with Randy's crew. The second that plow moves, and that dozer moves, the excavator's filling in the trenches, the stringer cart's ready to go. Everything's just moving, it's pretty efficient, it's pretty cool to see. So this pipe, because it's cold and it's large, is much less flexible and more difficult to work with than a, like a standard, you know, smaller, smaller, warmer pipe. Very difficult to say that in a serious manner, but, but seriously. So that's why they're kind of, they're only getting so far ahead with the stringer cart. They've got to hold the pipe back with the, uh, with the hole with the excavator there and just kind of keep moving in steps. So this up here towards the top of this run is where there's going to be another basin. There's four total on this project. Definitely more of a rolling hilly, rolling hill country down here than what we're used to right at home, but nothing unusual for what we farm. I think the best thing I can do now is just get out of their way and let them work. Maybe I'll try to come back tomorrow when they're putting those basins in. Ah, that's no problem.
Now, this guy here, I tricked him a little bit. Hey, Todd. I was just talking to Randy, and he said it looked like you were a little low out there. A little... So I went and raised your base. He said just to go raise the base up in here. Oh, you just adjusted the base yeah, station? I just adjusted the base station. I won't even tell those guys. It won't matter. <laughs> I'm just excited because I tricked you into coming to get me to buy me lunch. Yeah, it's not, it's not nice. That is. Yeah. I'll hop in with you. Is it warm in there? It's very warm. A lot less windy behind these trees. Kind of just like a, just an all-around miserable day, really. We get a lot of those up here. I'm an expensive eater, Todd. Okay. I don't eat anything other than bacon-wrapped filet mignon. Well, an hour later here, I, I actually did get a pretty dang good lunch out of Todd. We had to fill out a couple of surveys and some information for uh, a couple programs that I've elected to be a part of with Farmers Business Network, one of them being the gradable plan, they call it, which is taking some information voluntarily from me and they're, they're banking potential future carbon credits. It gets a little complicated, but but anyway, that's the gist of it. The other one was a actually a sustainable sustainability project that they're doing with uh, Tyson Foods. So we had to get some of that data out of the way and why not do it when you can eat some chili on a day like this looks like these guys have made it about to the very top of the project on the one run so they're boogieing right along actually that would mean they've made it to the top on both runs because they had to switch to a smaller pipe over here so awesome well we're in the heated shed now dogs what do you think you go take a nap. I'm gonna work on something. As you noticed, I took the Ranger with the heated cab and the enclosed cab today because it's a lot warmer. But this one right here does not have the enclosed cab, doesn't have the heat, but it's really handy. However, I think it would benefit from a windshield. So, I got a windshield. Not glass, obviously. That's it. You know, it's kind of funny. Actually, all I had to do was mention that this thing needs a windshield or something and a Polaris engineered accessory shows up. It's like magic. Read these instructions and check to be sure all parts and tools are accounted. I was, I'm just kidding. I, I did that for effect. I'll follow them. Step one, shift vehicle transmission into park. Turn ignition switch off and remove key. Now what do I do? Anna? Basically, open clamps, push against pillars, lock clamps. Doesn't seem too complicated. I was afraid of that. Maybe I got it upside down. Pretty sure I do. Oh, the whole 30 seconds wasted. How many people were screaming at their computers or their phones or whatever when I was doing that? Oh, what a project that was! Pull off the tear offs. All of two minutes on that. Now I can put the key back in. Oh, yeah, it's way warmer in here already. You want to ride or something? It's kind of clearing up out here now. Sun's going down. Wind's died down. You know, honestly, I'd give on a ride if I could hit a million subscribers here. Somebody in the comments had that idea, and, and I would support that. She could get a ride in whatever she wanted. But first, we got to hit a million. For now, I think I'll go grab Onyx to teach the boy how to change oil on a 1975 Scottsdale C20. Did you notice what I did to it? That's pretty sweet, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an official Polaris engineered accessory, which I'm sure you know. Hey, dog. You want to race? Don't try this at home. Didn't even get any wind in your face. All right, you run the doors. Okay. I'll back that pickup out. Actually, let me uh, let me get it started here.
She does have true dual exhaust with glass backs. Yeah. The backup camera is terrible on this thing. Figure we'll get a little bit of heat in the oil here. Go check the mail. Well, the reason I'm changing oil on this is because I just bought the thing. I don't really know the history behind it. And it's not, as you'll see, as pretty under the hood as it is outside. I'm thinking, kind of thinking, kind of hoping that the engine that's in it is actually the original engine, but I don't know for sure. And I, I haven't looked into how to figure that out. I'm sure it's not too difficult. I can't find it. I need two hands. All right, my lovely assistant, are you almost done with your potato chips? Yep. I figured that's where you were running to when I drove off. There you can see, it's not all brand new like it is on the outside, but it seems plenty peppy. It's definitely a 5.7 liter tree fitty. You know what? I don't even think I need a jack. There you go. I got the hands all greasy. Now for this job, we're gonna use this super fancy drain pan that I got. I actually invented this myself out of a two and a half gallon chemical jug. Should be a nine or sixteenths. Nine, this one too? Here, no, just that one. Bolt gonna drop in this oil? Yeah. Yep. Um. You want me to pull it? Oh, what? How much longer till it's... Not much longer. There you go. You can leave it right there because that stream will start going back. <sighs> you can let that drain, push the pan under a little bit because that's... Yeah, there, there you go. Um, want me to get under there and pull that filter out? That makes a much bigger mess. Plus the exhaust is pretty warm. I'll get under there and twist that off. Oh no! Right down to my sweatshirt. I made a mess. Here, grab me some rags, would you, boy? Yep. Oh, it burns! There's blood everywhere! Alright. For this project, we're going to be using the Mystic JT8 530 premium synthetic, premium synthetic motor oil. And a filter. Are you trying to run over the dog's feet with the ripstick? No, I'm just getting as close as I can. Here, come over here, fill this filter up. Your ripstick is a tripping hazard. Maybe. Are we on camera? Here, step this way, step this way, into the shot, there you go. Mm, spin this way, this way, like up over, to your right. Around. Spin to your right, spin Under to your the legs. Now you're just doing tricks. Okay. You think I like carrying a camera everywhere when we gotta work? Come on now, work with me. Don't watch me drop this. Don't do that. <laughs> New filter's on. I didn't film it when I went underneath because it's, well, it's annoying dealing with the camera underneath of a pickup truck. So we're gonna put in five quarts, a good five quarts here, and see where we're at. That includes the filter. So that's the one I filled the filter with. We'll use the rest of that. Okay. How much will this thing take? Take all of these that I set out here. Should take. Well, we need to hold this funnel. Nope, that'll be fine. The engine's still warm, but since we dumped the oil in the top, we need to let it run down through the through the back of the heads and okay. through the oil galley into so the pan. Give it some time to slowly. Give it some time, then we'll check. check a dipstick, and uh... Are you fine over there? You okay? No, don't leaf blow her. She doesn't like that. Let her, let her chill out. She's not a fan of the leaf blower, Onyx. Quit teasing her. You gotta head to hockey, Onyx? Yeah, and then a friend's house. And then a friend's house. And then Minneapolis to the US Bank Stadium. Why are you going to U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis? Our, our high school football team made state. I remember when I was on the football team and I made state. I wasn't on the football team, but I could have been a cheerleader. 
Dipstick says we're pretty full. But I was told never to trust a dipstick, so I'll fire it up, make sure there's good oil pressure, and then let it cool down and check it again. Holding steady. And the boy, of course, left me to clean up the mess that we made changing the oil on my pickup. Now while I wait for that oil to settle a little bit, oil to settle a little bit, I got one other thing I want to do here. I know, they're not all fancy and custom molded or anything like that, but the local Napa store had them hanging on the shelf when I was there, so I grabbed them and I thought, yeah, maybe, maybe this isn't a fancy custom molded floor mat kind of truck. That's for my pretty boy truck. And the oil is good. Five quarts actually shows a little bit full on here. Oh, had that issue yesterday. I need two hands again. Well, sounds like car owner Corey's gonna come out tonight and we're gonna go work on the race car, which is over here now for the winter. We're gonna get to work in here a little bit. Not on the carts tonight, but on the car that Corey brought out here, so it's not in his barn over the winter. We got a heated space to work. Got a new rig, if you missed it in the last video here, we got a new trailer, so for those that are interested in the race program, you gotta go to the Between the Rows channel that should be linked down below and follow that. We're gonna have a lot more racing on there this summer. In the meantime, thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.